we learned about this PPP aspect today. You know, I, I mean, there's a general feeling among us here in, in the newsroom that this is sort of a, of a minor development. Still, mm -hmm. it raises eyebrows, even if there is no indication that they violated any rules in doing this. Other mm -hmm. influencers did it. Other content creators did it. But given what we know, why does this raise eyebrows for a lot of people when they hear it? Well, there's the whole thing in business and especially in public relations, how you do anything is how you do everything. That someone capable of that extreme a deception, it's probably not the only one. This is probably the smallest case in PPP if it was even a violation. And we do know that that program went together very quickly. There were unintentional loopholes. There were people who leveraged those loopholes and probably to a lot greater degree than, than the sums you're seeing on this one. But it just goes to the point that run your business consistently and well and, and know that if you're ever in trouble for something, if you've done something wrong, it's probably an indication to everyone, to the viewing public and everyone you deal with that there's maybe more than meets the eye and they'll look deeper. Are you saying that is part of what you're saying that because she's facing these charges now, people look at the fact that she received some money as, I don't know, potentially um, problematic? Like what was behind that? Oh, absolutely. That if she was running a company that was based on false premise to begin with, what else is false? And where did those government dollars go? Where did the sponsorship dollars go? What else should we know and what should we do about it? And and the other people in that category, too. How do we retain the reputation of what we're doing, which honestly is not policed? It's it's really a matter of who's willing to view and who's willing to sponsor is how they earn their livelihood. And of course, they deserve that livelihood. But yes, it sheds a negative light, not only on that individual, but maybe a bit on the category as well. And then I want to sort of take her out of it and just talk about influencers slash content creators, mm -hmm. many of whom, as I said, did apply for similar loans. Mm -hmm. What is it about that line of work, that profession that makes people, um, like I said, raise their eyebrows when they got these types of loans, even again, if they did nothing wrong, it's there's still a perception issue out there. There is a perception that the influencer category is a bit or maybe a lot smarmy that people are in that profession with nothing more than a camera and an opinion. And monetizing that in any way, primarily based on their ability to gain attention. So it is looked at as a little bit suspect. And honestly, when there are content creators, when they have a talent, when they're sharing value add, more power to them. They should be allowed to do that and it provides an important service. But there are all too many who are just getting into it to, um, to con free goods from companies. You know, I'm a travel reviewer, so you need to give me free travel, free accommodations, free meals. And, and there's a lot of misuse just simply because it is a category that's loose, not tightly defined, not tightly policed. So it, it's understandable that people hold that opinion, but I think it just creates the need and the opportunity for anyone making an honest living in the field to just be transparent, to be really evident that you are who you say you are. Um, I when I talked to you on the phone, I I, came, I brought up one specific example, a travel influencer who couldn't travel anymore and felt like they were losing income during the pandemic, perhaps was a legitimate reason to bring in some loan money from the PPP program. As I tried to think about what Ruby would have done, mm -hmm. again, I, I don't know, maybe there is something I'm missing. There, there definitely could be, but I wonder if that's also a perception issue. Like, what was she doing that she, or not doing that she needed this money? So how is that business monetized? And most of them are monetized on sponsorships. The bigger the viewership, the more sponsorship they can generally obtain. But maybe the sponsors were not being terribly careful. Just I see how many viewers, and I don't know how many viewers she had. The sister we spoke about yesterday has 1.4 million viewers. That's substantial. That's enough to attract significant sponsorship, and maybe that dropped off. It's possible. But when you then look deeper and look at the actual application form and see the only employers are the, the person on the, on the front line and their spouse, well, was that the spouse's only job? Was it presented accurately? Was that material vetted? 
it's nice in many respects to see the smaller business having gotten some help from PPP. That's important. And, and generally, most of the fraud was not, not based on small organizations. But in the hurry of things, oh, yeah, it's entirely possible somebody exaggerated or fabricated jobs just to meet the criteria so that they could they could monetize it. They could get some money where maybe it wasn't deserved.